Hi, I'm JT Masit. I'm with Caro Ready Mix Concrete Association, otherwise known as CRMCA. We're here talking about the procedures for the Concrete Strength Testing Technician Certification through ACI. ASTM C39 discusses the valuation of compressive strength testing of cylindrical test specimens. And ASTM 1231 is the procedure for compressive strength of unbonded caps for these cylinders. ASTM C1231 is used when cylinders are not capped using sulfur, neat cement, or gypsum. Rather, metal retaining rings and pads are used when testing for compressive strength. Before beginning procedures for testing cylinders, verify the specimens have been cast following ASTM C31 procedures. Curing properly is also important for accurate test results. Remove the concrete specimens from the moist curing room or tank. The specimen should stay moist throughout the testing process, so have wet burlap on hand if testing multiple specimens. Check the specimen for perpendicularity. Each end of the cylinder should be less than 0.5 degrees off the axis. If needed, use a mechanical or hand grinder to level the ends properly. For unbonded caps, there should be no depression more than 0.2 inches, about 1 8 inch deep. Just another reminder that when you're reviewing ASTM standards on the web, make sure that they are up to date, typically within the last two years or so. So is this one. Take two diameter measurements at right angles to each other at about the center of the height of the cylinder. The difference should not be more than 2% between the largest measurements. Record and use these measurements to calculate the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. If the difference is more than 2%, the specimen shall not be tested and communication should take place with the project personnel to determine action needed. Wipe clean the bearing surface of the retaining ring and pad surfaces. For unbonded caps, insert the retainer pad in the retainer cap. If the retainer pads are already installed, verify the pads are within the use limit per Table 1 in ASTM C1231. Most pads should not be used more than 100 times total. Wipe off the upper and lower bearing blocks and the end surfaces of the specimen. Place the specimen on the lower bearing block. Center the specimen within the upper bearing block, aligning the axis of the specimen with the center of the thrust of the upper bearing block. Make sure the movable seating block at the upper bearing block is adjusted to be parallel with the top of the specimen. At this point, make sure the compression machine is on and the load indicator is set to zero, meaning no compressive load is yet being applied. Also, if the machine controls allow, input any other information on the specimen for record at this time. When using unbonded caps, apply less than 10% of the expected load. Check that the cylinder is still within 0.5 degrees of the vertical axis, as well as the cylinder is centered inside the retaining rings. Apply the load continuously and smoothly. In the second half of the loading period, the rate should be at 35 plus or minus 7 pounds per square inch per second. Make no additional adjustments to this rate as the ultimate load is approaching, even if stress rates decrease due to minor cracking in the specimen. Apply the load until there is a steady load rate decrease after the clear fracture has occurred. At Caesar, pounds per minute is shown, so for their machine, 21,200 to 31,600 is equivalent to the 35 plus or minus 7 pounds per square inch per second for a 4 inch cylinder. Record the maximum load and type of fracture pattern. To determine the compressive strength of the specimen tested, multiply the maximum load by 4, then divide by the average diameter squared times pi. Alternatively, divide the maximum load over the surface area of the cylinder. If required, the density of the concrete can be determined either based on the dimensions or submerged weight of the specimen. 
In most cases, the specimens have already been measured prior to compressive testing. Therefore, multiply the specimen mass by the constant 6,912, then divide by pi length diameter squared. Calculate the compressive strength to the nearest 10 pounds per square inch and density to the nearest 1.0 pounds per cubic foot. Report the identification information and age, maximum load, measurements, and calculation results, fracture type, curing methods, and surface corrections. If you are a member of CRMCA in Colorado or even within the region, don't hesitate to email me and send me your questions and hopefully I can answer them as quickly and as accurate as possible. So again, thank you for watching and thank you to Caesar for uh, supplying the lab and helping out with this procedure.